Hi everyone, so time for another video. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to look at a new product. Um, I've just had deployed them a little bit in operational technology environments, but I'm actually going to look at Forty Deceptor, which I think is an excellent product. So basically, it's a lure. So if you think of like a, a mouse and a mouse trap, it's designed to lure potential threats or hackers into trying to access and compromise a box. Uh, it's got loads of features that it's able to do that um, are really smart. One of the things is it's able to um, dynamically update uh, address lists on the gate firewall. So um, if a certain public IP address um, tries to access the deceptor that I've set up, I could get that populated to a dynamic address list in my gate to automatically run it. Um, what I'm actually going to do is a little bit different here. Um, I'm actually going to publish 40 Deceptor, but I'm going to publish it on a, uh, on a public IP. Um, and I'm going to leave it a month or so, and I'm going to see what if anyone actually tries to compromise the box. Um, so hopefully it's it's interesting for you all. Um, I'm going to start the video by actually showing how to register uh, a new appliance. Um, so Fortinet themselves have supplied me with uh, a trial key for this. So uh, I'm going to enter that and register it against my own personal account now. User. I've populated the credentials here. Again, um, for the purposes of this video, um, it's going to be uh, internally uh, have an internal IP address, but I'm just going to expose it to the public internet. Yeah, we like the terms and conditions. Yeah, we like that. And I'm going to add a license file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just actually going to demonstrate where you get the images from or the firmware for VM-based products because a lot of uh, clients do ask this. So if you go over to support and firmware download and find the product, so in our case, it's going to be 40 Deceptor. Um, I don't really care about stability or anything like that. It's just a test, so I'm just going to go with the latest and the greatest at the minute. Um, and I want the um, OVH one. So I'm going to go with this one here. So I'm now going to create the deployment in VMware. So the uh, disk drives and the deceptor itself. Yeah, next. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really care. It's going to get destroyed in a minute anyway. i wait for that to provision. Ta-da. I assume it's going to be the usual. Yeah. Okay, so... I've eventually provisioned the instance. Um, I had to log into the command line and change the default gateway and IP address and create a port forward. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to upload the license. So on logging in, it's just asked me to uh, set a time zone. So I'm just going to seek it to a well known NTP server. There we go. Cool. So now that we have done the deployment, it wanted to do 10,000 reboots. We've, we've got through that. Uh, we are going to uh, try and provision a law now. So you go to Deception, Deception OS. And um, seeming as I have a massive interest in, in operational technology, uh, let's go for a SCADA system. So we'll download that. Okay, so that decoy has now provisioned. You can see it's on 10, 88, 88, 210. 
So for the final stage of the video, I just wanted to show what a likely hacker would do. So um, they certainly wouldn't get in someone's infrastructure and just know the IP address of the decoy. Um, they would probably do lots of recon, NMAT scans, kind of thing too, to have a look around um, and find find out what's there. So um, yes, we know the IP of the, the decoy, so it's 10.88.88.210. Um, but if we do an NMAP scan against it, you will see that it returns um, that uh, HTTP is open. Um, and um, you, you we could do an SNMP walk as well uh using uh public which is um the community string that's very very commonly used for plcs and you can see that that returns uh lots of information about the the device itself um so let's try and browse to it as you can see you've got a decoy of a rockwell automation program programmable logic controller the, all the data is uh, is spoofed. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty uh, impressive. So, if we look at what the deceptor is actually going to do now, so we've deployed the decoy. What we want to do is we want to head over to the incident tab and analysis. And if we just felt if we just look at the top one, see me actually logging in to the appliance. They started to create a log of potential threat. And this is all what Deceptor is about. It's essentially informing uh, a business that something lateral movement might be going on. Somebody has tried to access a device and it essentially snaps the, the mousetrap down on them. And so let's log in um, wh where they're coming from. So. 10.88.88.51, that's the internal IP address of the, the host that I'm recording the video on. You can see that it's done a GET request. It's very, very impressive. Full audit log. Now, when I was looking around, there was a couple of other uh, areas that I found extremely interesting. So you've got an attack map. So um, this is uh, 10 88 was another decoy that I did as testing, but we're working with 10 88 um, And as you can see, these are the potential threats that I've tried to access the appliance. Um, and you can you can actually um, you can actually go back in time as well, which is pretty cool. The next thing that I thought is extremely interesting is um, the ability to automate quarantining. So what I've done is I've added 40 Deceptor to my home fabric. So 1088881 is my root gate, 60E. Uh, I've connected it up. Um, and I've essentially um, formed the API required to be able to quarantine. So, um, as you will see here, 10, 88, 88, 51, uh, 11.05, when, when I browse to the um, the Rockwell Automation Programmable Logic Controller, um, it's logged my IP and it's pushed this information to the 60E appliance. And then I could add that I could then populate a dynamic address list to, to block the appliance, or I could use an indicator of compromise to essentially uh, block the, the appliance in real time. So I think the uh, the last comment would be just to show you the deployment map. So um, as you can see, this is the, the network that I provisioned the decoy on. Um, it started to passively scan and detect other devices on my network. Um, so if I click uh, this one as an example, it's got um, it's got a ubiquity access point, access point there. Um, it's put them into uh, an asset discovery table, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, I've had to configure this, so I've had to uh, configure passive scanning um, on port two, 
uh, and then passive um, ICS network discovery. So this is more operational technology focused, but um, as you can see it's passively looking for things like mod bus um, on online network. And, and, and I can absolutely assure you that there's not mod bus um, operating in a house environment, but um, certainly for some of our clients, this would be uh, very beneficial. Um, and unfortunately, I think that brings the, the video to an end. So yeah, 40 sector, uh, really cool product, um, seems to be selling really well, certainly in operational technology environments. Um, I guess if a, as a bit of a tip, if a customer comes to you and uh, you want to understand uh, quickly if they are being breached, then certainly uh, 40 Deceptor is is a pretty cool tool. Um, and let's not forget as well that it is able to respond with uh, fabric integrations and integrations into uh, various NAP solutions as well, which I've not shown in the video. So um, yeah, it's cheap. Um, and it's a pretty cool product in my opinion, so uh, definitely uh, take a look at it. As always, I would appreciate it if you could like, comment and subscribe to the channel um, and check out, uh, look out for more videos soon.